to do a dressing change and a wound culture. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the patient's record and see when the last time the change, the dressing was changed and it looks like it needs to be changed and it looks like the doctor is still wanting that done. So we're going to go ahead and gather our supplies. And go meet the patient. Knock knock. Hi, my name's Tony. I'm a student nurse at MCC. I'm gonna check your dressing today and see how things are going. I'm gonna wash my hands. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna ask her uh, what her name and date of birth is. And she tells me that her name is Sally Smith and her date of birth is 916 of 85. Sally, are you having any pain today? And she tells me that she's having some pain, so I'm gonna go ahead and give her some medication for the pain. And I'm gonna step out for about a half hour and then I'll come back. Um, and when I, now that I got, have gone for my half hour and I'm back, I'm gonna go ahead and assess her vitals. I'm gonna assess everything except for the wound itself. Um, at this time, if there's any family in here, I'm gonna ask them to step out. And I'm gonna go ahead and Shut the curtain and give Miss Sally some privacy. At this time, I'm gonna raise the bed up to a good working height for me and um, so that I'm able to easily assess the wound and then not hurt my back while, while I'm doing it. I'm also gonna, gonna go ahead and put down this rail here. While I'm doing this, I'm going to explain to her that I'm going to be wearing a gown and a mask um, and gloves while I do the procedure. Uh, not, not necessarily for, for her, me, but to keep her wound clean so that um, she doesn't get any sickness or anything from me, nothing gets in that wound. I'm also going to lay that bed down. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands here again. Get it all kind of set up. Put my gown on here. And if I had a partner, I would have them. I would go ahead and have them help me put my gown on. going to do this a little bit early just because I don't feel well and so I don't want to, to contaminate anything with her. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just expose the wound area and nothing more and the drain making sure that everything is okay there and it looks like there's some a little bit of drainage coming through so I would circle that and document it with the time and the date. And before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and put down some, some pads, and that way if there's any drainage that's coming off of the wound, it doesn't, doesn't drip down and, and uh, get on her. Um, because that's draining a little bit too, I can also look underneath of her and make sure that there's nothing cooling underneath of her at all. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and take this 
dressing this old dressing off and I'm going to start on the opposite side away from me and I'm going to go ahead and hold down on her skin gently holding it down so that I don't tear her skin when I take the tape off and I'll do the same thing over here and then I'll come to this side and I'll do the same thing I'll gently hold that skin down I try and get this tape off of here. Hmm. There we go. And kind of hold it down here so that so that we don't tear anything. And then there's just one more piece over here. So once I have the tape undone, I'm going to go ahead and grab the dressing in the middle and kind of pull it up all together and I'm going to turn it over and look at it and I can see that there's a green yellow purulent drainage in there and so I know that I'm going to go ahead and need this swab. Um, once I'm done with this I'm going to go ahead and dispose of it in my biohazard bag. And I can check on her during the processing, see how she's doing, make sure that she's doing okay. I'm going to go ahead and take off these gloves. And I'm going to wash my hands. Again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my gauze pads ready. These are just regular 4x4 four four gauze pads. And I'm going to put in there just some sterile water so that those are kind of clean. Oops, I'm going to try not to be too big of a mess. So, I'm going to wash my hands and put on my gloves. And I can see that that wound is draining a little bit, and I'll just get that cleaned up here real quick for her. I'm going to move these over here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start on this opposite side. I'm going to start at the top, and I'm just going to start here at the wound, and I'm going to go straight out. And I'm going to get a new pad and come down here to the bottom of the wound and just go straight away from me. I'm going to get another clean gauze and right here at the wound and just gently clean that wound and try and get any of that crusty stuff off that's possibly around the wound there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to start at the top and come straight away and go to the bottom of the wound and come straight towards me. Always away from the wound. So and then here in the middle and again gently but just with enough pressure to get the, the stuff off of there. And then I'm going to just clean around this drainage tube. So I'm going to go right around the, the tube in a circular motion with one and then I'm going to get another one and kind of clean on the outside of the tube there. And once I have it all clean I'm going to go ahead and take off my gloves and wash my hands. And I see now um, that the wound is all clean. So I'm going to, before I get all my sterile stuff set up, I'm going to go ahead and get my lab culture, and my wound culture for the lab. So I wash my hands and I got some gloves on here. And I'm just gonna take and grab a specimen culture swab. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that. 
And I'm going to take the cap off the top of this one. And so then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and remove the swab from the package. And I'm just going to get right in the middle of that wound where that, that purulent discharge is. And I'm just going to go in a circular motion right around there, making sure to get, get a good sample for the lab. And when I'm done with that, I'll put it inside the specimen container. I'm going to go ahead and write on here um, the patient's name. Um, Sally Smith, the date, um, the room number, the specimen, and the patient at uh, the time, and the patient's date of birth. And when I'm when I'm completed with that, I'm going to go ahead and put it in this specimen bag for the laboratory, biohazard specimen bag for the laboratory. And I'm also going to put in the lab orders in this bag before I take it down to the lab too and I'll go right in there. So once I'm done with that, I'll set that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and take off my gloves. <clears throat> and wash my hands. And now I'm going to get everything set up for my dressing change to put on the clean dressing. So I'm going to get my, my bandages all set up here and I'm going to keep them keep them sterile while I, while I get them ready. So I'm going to go ahead and peel them apart. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this out here, just touching the outside, keeping that on the sterile field. And I'm going to do that with this one as well, just touching the outside of the package and keeping my sterile field. Um, when I took the dressing change off, I noted um, how it came off and what order everything was in, and that way I can place it back in the same order that I took it off of. So, one more here. my hands and I'm going to go ahead and put on my, oh, well, I'm going to take out my sterile gloves here. I'm going to go ahead and get them laid out here. Just being careful to touch on the outside and not contaminating the sterile field. And so I would wash my hands before I put my my gloves on. So the first glove, I'm going to grab it just on the inside here. On the outside. Actually, I'm going to grab it on the outside and I'm going to place it on my hand and make sure that it's up and the second one I'm going to grab it on the inside. And place it in my hand there. And once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place the first dressing.
covered nicely there. And then I'm going to go ahead and this one only had one dressing on there, so I didn't need that second one. But I'll go ahead and put the, the abdominal pad down on the wound. And I'm going to go ahead and put... This one's a little tricky because you can't... You can only touch it now with your one finger. Put that around the drain tube there without touching the tube. And the same. Like and once I have that done, then I'll use the tape. And I'll tape the dressing down. Keeping it securely, but not, not hurting the patient either. And then one more. Here for the, for the drainage. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my mess a little bit. Well, I'm getting things gathered up. I noticed that the drain tube is kind of full. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my container that has uh, measuring marks inside. And I'm going to go ahead and open the drain tube and just empty that into my cylinder here. And then I'm going to go ahead, make sure that the tube is sealed back again. Move this out of the way. And I want to make sure that I clip the drain tube back onto the patient. And once I'm done with that, I'm gonna once I'm gonna measure this, measure this, and um, dump it in the in the toilet before I'm done. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get the patient all ready to go and I realized that they've left the left her blue pads down there so I'm gonna go ahead and remove those now from there and dispose of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove my gloves and my my gown and my mask and dispose of it. And I'll dispose of this properly in the biohazard trash container. I'm going to wash my hands. And I'm going to go ahead and get this patient back in a comfortable position. So I'm going to go ahead and lift her head back up. Into a... Position of comfort. I'm going to make sure she has her claw bell. I'm going to go ahead and cover her back up. Grab any remaining supplies and go ahead and lower the bed. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and let her family come back in. And I'm going to deliver this specimen to the lab. And once I've delivered the specimen to the lab and I'm comfortable that they have gotten it, I'm going to go ahead and document document um, that the procedure was done, the time and the date, how the, what the patient's response to the seizure, procedure was, what my assessment of the wound and of the drainage um, is, and report any findings to the physician.